What's up guys, time for another deep cut review from the early 80s. We're gonna review one of my favorite directors, Brian De Palma's Body Double. Let's go. What's up guys, time for another deep cut review. I've been getting so many comments uh, about these deep cuts, wanting more, and uh, you know, I'm constantly thinking like, what else can I review? Because there's tons of great deep cuts out there, but today's gonna be a treat because we're gonna review one of my all-time favorite films, Body Double. And uh, this isn't one I recently discovered. This is one that I watched on you know, HBO back in the uh, early 80s. Much like Looker, you know, I just reviewed Looker. A lot of you guys had never heard of Looker, and I'm glad I was able to present that to you guys because it's a it's a good movie. But this is a really good movie. Someone's following you. I know. Look out! He's right behind you. Why were you following Gloria Ravel? That's not what happened. He was throwing out a net, surprising me. That's what he wanted. And I would even say the backstory on Body Double is probably just as interesting as the movie itself. So before we dive deep, let me give you a quick plot synopsis just to tell you what Body Double is about. It's about this actor played by Craig Watson, uh, who was in Schizoid, a movie that I reviewed like years and years ago. Uh, Craig Watson, I think, is a very underrated actor. And uh, I've only seen a couple of his movies, but he, you know, he carries this thing and he's really um, accomplished here. As a matter of fact, Brian De Palma gave him high praise, that he was very proud of his work. But he plays this guy, uh, Jake, Jake Scully, I think, and um, he is having a, a little bit of like actors block or panic attacks or, or you know, you know, some actors, they really get in, in, you know, invested in their craft and it becomes extremely stressful. And, and that's what happens with him. You know, right at the beginning, he's doing this movie called, funny enough, Vampire's Kiss, which this movie came out before the movie Vampire's Kiss with Nicolas Cage. But, you know, it opens up. You think, is this a, like a vampire flick or something like that? But no, it's it's him. He's on the set and he's in this casket and he just freezes. He's like, oh my God, I can't, I can't move. You know, he has a panic attack. Then, to make matters worse, he comes home and he sees that his girlfriend is cheating on him with another guy. By the way, the girlfriend was played by the great Barbara Crampton. This is one of her first movies. She doesn't have a single line. So then he goes to this acting class and, you know, he freezes up again and he meets this guy played by the great Greg Henry. And, you know, he's being a good friend to him and he lets him stay in his house. And this house is extremely unique. It's an octagon house, which is a real house. And I believe it still stands. But you can tell when you're watching this movie that they, they definitely like blue screened or green screened the windows. But it's just a cool location. And I think that's part of De Palma's charm in his movies is he likes interesting visuals, even with his locations. But, you know, um, Jake, he's staying there and then he's looking across the way and this is where our, our story really kicks into high gear because he sees this woman and she is doing this sort of like a strip tease in front of her window and she does it like every night. And he becomes kind of intoxicated and, uh, you know, he's fantasizing about this woman. But then it becomes dangerous because Jake, he sees her husband is, um, you know, they're getting into a, like a fight with each other and it gets a little violent. And eventually it becomes deadly. And Jake, he, you know, he runs over there. He tries to save her. This is that great moment, which was very similar to the end of Blowout. Hello? Yes, yes, look out, he's right behind you! <laughs> you know, you got Travolta's character and he's trying to save Nancy Allen and it goes like right up to the last minute. As a matter of fact, Carlito's Way has this too. Same thing here. I think De Palma has a thing with having these chase scenes, you know, and stretching it out for a long time. And you think the person's, you know, they might be saved. More times than not, they are not saved at all. And, and same thing here. He misses her by mere inches. And the killer, he's this Indian looking dude, very memorable killer. And he's got this big drill. But, but the one of the weird things about it is it's a corded drill. It's not a cordless drill. So he's got to be able to be near uh, an outlet. <laughs> which is kind of funny. But Jake, he's on the floor below and then he's looking up and he sees blood 
you know, coming through a hole in the ceiling. But it's all just shot beautifully. You know, De Palma just has such a way of creating his scenes, putting them together, keeping it visually intoxicating. And he's one of those rare directors that can stretch out a scene as long as he wants and he can still keep you glued. As a matter of fact, there's a scene in this movie that's 20 minutes long of Jake just kind of stalking you know, the, the woman before she dies. The woman's name is Gloria. And that scene, it is stretched out for so long, but it feels quick. But by the time you're done with it and you look at the time, you're like, oh shit, that was literally 20 minutes long. And, you know, and that's, I think that's all about the, the pacing of the scene, the different locations, you know, it's not just A to B. You know, it's basically keeping you interested throughout the whole thing. I know De Palma wasn't really happy with the way this scene uh, panned out. I, I'm sure, you know, directors, they can't be 100% happy with every movie that they've done or every scene that they've done. I get that. And I kind of understand why. And it wasn't because of the length of the scene. I think at the end of the scene, there's this like big makeout scene in the broad daylight, and it immediately switches to them two in front of um, a green screen. And I think that's just because when you're out in public like that and you're having this heavy makeout session, you know, where clothes start coming off and whatnot, just to keep your actors comfortable, you do it in front of a green screen. But I digress. Going forward. Um, our main character, Jake, he, you know, he's sad that he, he wasn't able to save the girl. And then he sees on TV, he's funny, weirdly enough, watching porn. He notices this woman, this porn star, and she's dancing in the exact same fashion as Gloria was across the way. He realizes that something's off here. Something's not right. And so he starts researching what's going on, investigating. And eventually he ends up um, meeting Holly Body, who was played by Melanie Griffith. And so he finds out that things aren't really what they seem. And that's why this movie's called Body Double because a, another body was being used in place of Gloria. And it was kind of like a misdirection type thing. And, and our killer was doing this on purpose. Yes, I'm sure Holly, that was him. Holly, listen, just. God, you're Holly, really sick. please, please, I mean, just listen to me very idea, carefully for a fine. second. Holly, I am not a film producer and I am not a rich kid. No, you're a jerk. No, Holly, Holly, please just listen to me for a second. And we'll go into more of the reveal later in the review, but I want to jump over to the behind the scenes on this movie because it's hella interesting. Brian De Palma likes to push the envelope. And for this movie, he wanted this movie to be the first pretty much X-rated big budget movie, you know, to be released in theaters. He wanted actual sex scenes in Body Double. He originally had his eyes on an actual porn star instead of Melanie Griffith. Studio said, hell no. You know, this is Columbia Pictures. You know, there was a lot of push and pull there, but eventually Brian De Palma realized this is not gonna happen. I'm not gonna do this. How Melanie Griffith got the role was interesting because she was really good friends with Brian De Palma. You know, they were just family friends. And he wasn't even thinking of her for the part. But then she came to him and said, hey, how about let me try out? And he thought, this is gonna be really awkward because you're a really good friend of mine and you have to pretty much you know, audition with this extremely sexual scene. As a matter of fact, this got a little scandalous because there were rumors that Brian De Palma was actually having women perform um, sexual acts in his hotel room to audition. Later, they come to find out that that wasn't the truth. You know, it just, it just spread into this ugly rumor. Yeah, I believe Mel Melanie Griffith even came forward and said, no, that wasn't true at all. That did not happen. You know, I'm sure she did have to do some uncomfortable things, for the role, but she didn't have to go that far. And let's face it, like, let's say if you're auditioning for like a stripper type role or a, a porn star or something like that, you're probably gonna have to do some uncomfortable things in that audition. So, you know, I think it's fair game. And Brian De Palma was actually inspired by his own movie, Dress to Kill, because in Dress to Kill for the shower scenes, he did use a body double. And it's kind of interesting because it seems like he gets his ideas from previous movies. Like, Blowout was inspired, I think, by Dress to Kill as well. Because of, you know, the uh, sound design and whatnot. He's like, hey, let's build a story around that. Same thing here. You know, let's take this, you know, just this simple idea of a body double, which, you know, you have body doubles in every single movie, pretty much. And let's build a story around that. How could you use that and make it kind of a, a murder mystery with a, a little bit of eroticism? And he does it beautifully. Um, I think Body Double 
uh, is a bona fide cult classic. As a matter of fact, the movie American Psycho in the book, and I don't remember if it's in the movie or not, but in the book, Patrick Bateman's favorite movie is Body Double. And he, he's watched it over like 30 times. You know, I think this movie really found its audience because when it first came out, uh, the studio kind of hated it. Uh, it. It was a box office flop. It was even nominated for some Razzies. But there are some really fine performances in this movie by Craig Wasson, um, by Melanie Griffith. I think Melanie Griffith was nominated for some awards for this movie, too. I mean, she really has to put herself out there. And I would even say, you know, roles like, say, um, Julianne Moore in Boogie Nights might have been inspired by Melanie Griffith in this movie. I think Melanie Griffith is highly underrated. She's in two of my all-time favorite movies. She's in this, Body Double, and she's also in Something Wild, which is another movie that I plan on reviewing down the line because nobody ever talks about it. And it is phenomenal. Uh, it's one of the most uniquely paced movies because it starts off as kind of a, a comedy and it ends up being this gripping thriller. And Melanie Griffith is just mesmerizing in the movie. She's mesmerizing in this as well. And this movie, let's face it, it's full of beautiful women. Deborah Shelton, who plays Gloria. Now, I saw this movie way back in the day, and at the time I thought, this is one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> but something always felt off about the performance, and I, you know, I found out later that they dubbed her voice. It wasn't her actual voice in the movie. But I think you, know, you had to have an actress that... I get, really had a striking presence, and boy, does she. And so you can kind of understand why our hero is as intoxicated as he is. You know, there's moments in this movie where you're like, he's going too far, you know? Uh, he, and, and he is uh, concerned about her well being, but there's more to it than just that. Like, he's kind of obsessed with her. Now, one of the scenes I think is the most memorable in this movie is the Frankie Goes to Hollywood scene. Jake goes to this porn company and he auditions so he can be in there so he can investigate uh, Holly Body. And so the next scene, which is very abrupt, it just cuts into this music video. And it's a Frankie Goes to Hollywood music video, which was supposed to be on MTV, but it was too dirty and they, they ended up not airing it. But it's in the movie and it feels like a music video and it ends with this uh, erotic scene with Holly Body in the bathroom. But it's just very stylish looking and it just screams the 1980s. The song Relax, I think, is probably one of the like top five staples of the 80s. You know, when you think about five songs from the 80s, I think Relax is one of those songs. Now, jumping to the end of the movie, uh, I'm going to reveal the, the end. This is sort of a twist type ending. De Palma's not really uh, one of those directors that just likes twist endings for the sake of twist endings. It's got to be pivotal to the story and it is because we find out that Greg Henry is actually the Indian and this is all pretty much just so he can rob the place but Holly Body's in danger and then you got Jake trying to save her now it's the weirdest thing because the big showdown is in this grave you know just like the beginning of the movie where it opens up and then it cuts to Jake being on set in a movie, uh, which is a unique way to end a movie. And then it goes right back into the action sequence. And I guess it's a way to show that you know his panic attacks, he can work through them, which is what he's doing. I guess that's the point of the scene. And I gotta mention that this is one of the most memorable in credit sequences I've ever seen, because then we just see Jake in action, he's a vampire and he's standing behind this actress and then this body double steps in. And when the body double steps in, they show from the neck down, completely nude. And this is while the credits are rolling. So this movie is so De Palma, but it's different than his others. I think it's more on the erotic side and thinking back like, what if they said, hey, you know what? Let's make this an X-rated movie. I don't think it was necessary. I think it was, it's fine just the way it is. And still to this day, one of my favorite movies and one of the most unique freaking movies out there. You know, I've talked about it in my live streams, which by the way, make sure you subscribe to my second channel, Drum Drums Extra. That's where all my live stream clips are amongst other content. But, um, you know, I, I talked about like erotic thrillers on one of the episodes. And one thing I mentioned is there's not that many great ones. You know, you have like Basic Instinct and you have this one and maybe a couple of others, uh, Fatal Attraction. Most of them are pretty bad, but this is one of the best. But I'm giving Body Double a trap on an island. You know, again, it's one of my favorite movies. Of course, I'm going to give it a trap on an island. So 
I urge you guys to check this movie out if you haven't. And uh, I have the Umbrella release, and the this is probably the reason I ended up getting a region free Blu-ray player, you know, because this would not play on my American player, and so I ended up getting a region free. And thank God I did because it's the gift that keeps on giving. But let me know what you guys think of Body Double when you see it. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks, where we talk horror all day and every day on Fridays. We do free for our Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dumbs on my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a copy. And you guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Drum Dumb out.